So this is Diane. We're at the CAT site doing another interview, and this time we have designer Kurt Hughes with us. Kurt, can you just give us a little bit of background about yourself? Yeah, I first found about, out about multi-hulls reading Arthur Piver's books. And I got my degree in architecture, but when I started architecture school, I started building my first boat. And actually, I sailed it the week I graduated. And it turned out to be the fastest boat in Seattle, which blew everybody's mind. <laughs> but it was a 31-foot trimaran. And I was still working as an architect when I sold some plans. And one thing led to another pretty soon. That's all I was doing. That's very cool. So are you mostly doing custom design or stock plans? Uh, probably 50-50. But there was an interesting thing happened when I started out. Is if I would have gotten my naval architecture degree, it wouldn't have helped because of the coming change. And I figured out that Seattle... No, only later did I figure out that Seattle had a unique convergence going on. Something called Max Surf came out, which was a lines drawing program running on a Mac, and it was about $5,000 a seat. And a friend of mine, Dave Vacanti, wrote a DOS based program and sold it for $50 a seat. And those 3D, those drawings would port into AutoCAD or somebody started generic CAD in Seattle. And AutoCAD was what, $3,000 a seat and generic CAD was $49. And Aldis, which became Adobe, had the best EPS format. And generic CAD wrote an EPS format to that, to Aldis. And then we're all using um, the local Microsoft DOS. <laughs> And so I gave a lecture in Southampton, England. And what I'd done is I'd set up my camera to take slides of the progress on, on the screen. So from the lines drawing program to the CAD drawing to renderings, and I took pictures of all those. And at that, after that lecture, the self-declared leading computer wizard in boat design came up to me and he said, we can't do that. How do you do that? <laughs> and I realized something unique had gone on in Seattle. So it sounds like you were really at the cutting edge when you first started coming out with the designs and as a way to draw yes. and design them. You have yes. more tools. And, and no naval architecture program did that back then. Well, that's cool. So you kind of learned by doing. So what's happened with your plans since then? Where Where are they being built? Um, who you know, they're on? being built all over the world. Um, there's some in India going on now. I had some in Tunisia, Japan, Brazil, um, every European country. And of course, Australia and New Zealand have always been uh, favorites. Well, and they're certainly selling all over the, or sailing all over the world. We saw yeah. them when we were out. It's, um, you have some beautiful designs. What are some of the more popular designs? for people who are um, specifically cruising them, I guess. Yeah, there's a 42 foot uh, catamaran that I was one of my earlier designs. And in fact, I had a thing when I started out, I did something called cylinder molding, which hadn't been done before using full sheets of plywood. And so I was able to develop hole shapes in just a couple of days using cylinder molding but it was building from the outside in rather than the inside out. And I figured everybody wouldn't know how to do that. So I had something where I said, okay, if you pay for my airfare and my, my board, I'll come build your holes for you. And an Australian in Perth took me up on that and built his holes. And he later sailed it around the world. And in fact, two of those have gone around the world. And so that's one of the more popular ones, a 42-foot catamaran. That's, that's really interesting. Well, what are some of the elements of your designs that make you make them stand out to people? What are some of the special things? Um, I like boats that sail well. And so no fat hulls, no fat boats. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we had a low-volume catamaran too, yeah. 
Yeah. And I like it set up for shorthanding. So um, for a while, I had a Formula 40 trimaran. And it was set up for shorthanding. And the first time I reefed, it, when, of course, the wind was too strong, when you finally reef. Mm -hmm. And I reefed in about 20 seconds by myself. And that's because everything was led to the helm. And so I really think it's important if you're going to be shorthanded to have the uh, the deck hardware aimed at the helm. So do you sail all of your designs yourself and get out and test them that way? You know, the more work I've done, the less I can sail. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. I've sailed on a lot of them, but, but um, certainly not all of them. Right. And I think about 20 years ago, my office manager said, you know, you've got a thousand designs under construction. I said, really? But that was back when I had a database. Um, everything goes out PDF now, so there's no mailing, so there's no database. Right. Um, so I know you also design trimarants as well as catamarants. So is there yeah. is one more popular than the other? Yeah, it depends on what you're going to do. Let me let me get rid of that call. Um, if performance is what you're interested in then a trimaran is probably better. If you want a living room, a catamaran is better. And occasionally I've had a design that was a big trimaran that had a cabin like a catamaran, but that was like a 79 foot. <laughs> that would be that would be tricky to get into a lot of marinas, I guess. Yes. So um, you told me that one of your important considerations is speed um, and and performance. What are some of the other important considerations that you take into account when you're designing a cruising boat, a cruising boat? Well, certainly sea kindliness. And there again, the fast hulls are more sea kindly because they don't get heaved as much in the waves. And um, of course, good short handings set up. And... And also having the designs reflect what the people want. So if everything's on CAD, it's pretty easy to change a stock design to fit somebody's individual needs. And I think that's important. That makes sense. How have you seen multi-hull design change through the years? I know it's um, the boats look quite a bit different than they did initially. Yeah, they started out being a lot fatter boats with no, no emphasis on performance. Um, certainly they've Many of them have performed better. Mine have performed better than most. And then also um, carbon fiber has become popular. And so that has uh, improved the breed, even though it's more expensive. And things like reverse bows give a better ride. So uh, that's yeah, pretty much it. And what about the future? So that's sort of where it's come over the past while. Where do you think it'll go in the future? Um, gold-plated naval architecture jobs, our offices will start doing catamarans. <laughs> People who wouldn't let us tie up to their boats 10 years ago will. <laughs> uh, okay. And um, so instead of being, what, five or 10 prominent designers, there'll be hundreds of them. And they'll be designed during virtual reality so that you can um, see what your boat is like in real life. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cool to think about. Yeah, you could go walk around inside the boat and exactly. designers exactly. can see things as they go. Mm -hmm. So um, if somebody's interested in chatting with you about a boat, how do they how do they reach you? What's the best way to reach you? www.multiholdesigns.com. Sounds good. Is there anything else you'd like to tell people about your designs or about what you're doing? Um, www.multiholeblog.com <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Thanks so much for your time, Kurt. It was fun talking to you. Good and talking to you.